and not subsiding. So we've got those projected to go through at least the end of the year. We don't suspect that those are going to abate anytime soon. And, you know, the retail demand for our product remains incredibly strong. So I suspect part of what was going on today is the recognition that we're having a challenging and difficult time meeting all that demand, although we are still outperforming many of our competitors. Yeah, uh, you know, I guess it, uh, obviously you're dealing with a, what a lot of people who run companies are dealing with right now. But, you know, you mentioned your CFO was talking about ocean containers. Uh, you know, as much as 15000 back in 2019, it was $1,700. Um, yeah. I mean, even if things moderate, they still are probably not going back to 2019 levels, whether it's things like logistic co costs or even commodities, or are they, Mike? Well, I don't know that they'll go back immediately, but, you know, even when you look at commodities, I mean, I think we went through today and talked about steel is at 130% of its three- and five-year average. One of the things that we've done is we have taken price uh, moves. We've tried to be uh, minimal in terms of how much we're moving the price, just trying to cover these incremental costs. We've added... Uh, freight surcharges, things that we can back off of once we start to see these costs come down. Uh, and right now, quite frankly, we're spending the money. It's more important from my perspective to make sure that we're getting the product into the hands of our consumers. We talked on the call about the fact that, you know, we're one of the only OEMs that offers a pre-sold uh, order process and about 82% of our retail uh, coming out of the second quarter was pre-sold. And I would argue even the balance of that retail was sold by the time it actually landed at the dealership. So right now we're not sparing any expense and um, you know, we're gonna make sure we get as much product into the hands of our consumers as we can. But just in terms of the time frame, Mike, how long do you expect these kind of supply chain and pricing pressures to last? Are you talking into 2022, 2023? Uh, we think it's probably going to be into the early part of 2022 before things start to move. And, you know, part of the, the questions that we had on the call today is how fast do you think those are going to come down? And that's a question that we just don't know how to answer. Uh, and we have the ability to continue to evaluate our pricing. You know, we've got model year 22 introductions coming up here pretty shortly. Obviously, the team's going to factor in what we're seeing in the current environment. Uh, there's not a lot of inventory in the channel, so there is a bit of pricing power that we do have in terms of being able to move uh, the vehicle price is up to try and uh, recover a portion of the, the higher cost. But you know, I suspect we're going to continue to see this into 22. Uh, and it's going to probably take us the better part of 22 and into 23 to even get our dealer inventory back up to reasonable levels. Yeah, all right. So you mentioned that lack of available inventory in the channel again. So, uh, all right. So you're taking price there. I mean, when, uh, things don't normalize until 2023.